Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host Jason Turner, available for code reviews, contracting, and on-site training. This is another episode done in cooperation with Bloomberg, and as always, the views and ideas presented are entirely my own. And if you gathered by that intro, that means that we are discussing PMR and allocators again. So I made a couple of mistakes in the last few episodes that I put together, and we need to address those mistakes today. The first is that I would regularly refer to uh, the allocator, like saying this, the, the, these bytes were put, quote, in my allocator. Uh, that's not really the right way to phrase that. So the more correct way to phrase this is to say that we have memory that was obtained from our memory resource and we are storing things there. So we're staying, storing the data in our buffer that was obtained via a memory resource. So just as an aside there to make sure we get the terminology correct moving forward. But the other mistake that we need to address is a little bit more fundamental. And this comes from one particular uh, viewer. I had uh, two viewers actually that were uh, really paying attention on this and they, um, but I got this particular example from uh, Rahil uh, Baber. Baber, I'm sorry, I do not know how to pronounce this name exactly, but I'm guessing it's something along those lines. Uh, that this here is making this new class called print allocator, and this is uh, deriving from our PMR memory resource. So this is not only an example of showing us the issue that we've actually encountered here, but it is also an example for how to actually write your own allocator. So this has this void pointer do allocate and do deallocate, which takes a void pointer, a size and an alignment, size and alignment, and do is equal. Now, both of these call simply into the new delete resource. The new delete resource is the default allocation. This is just calling new and delete in C++. It's not really complicated or anything like that. And then this do is equal thing. So these are all things that had to be implemented from the base class with virtual member functions. These are override, 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 const, no accept things. So this is just the comparison that's going to be provided here. And it just, this again, just passes on to the new delete resource. So what we've done is created our own allocator, uh, print alloc called mem here, which is just going to print out with C out whenever we're doing something that call the new and delete resource. Let's play with this just a little bit. And right now we, we, we have this code set up from our previous examples where we've got a um, monotonic buffer resource that is using this local memory here. So I'm just going to do a quick example here to say, is this new and delete resource that I registered here, the set to default resource, is this going to print out here? And no, it's not. It's not because this is a vector, it is not a PMR vector. So if I use a PMR vector, then it should call into this new and delete resource that we set as our, our default resource that prints and then calls via uh, new and delete. So no big deal, this tells us that it in fact allocated 16 bytes and then it deallocated 16 bytes. So that's approximately what we would expect because we had four four byte elements in our vector. So, uh, int is the size of four bytes on all modern platforms. So now we have a way of peeking behind the curtain as to what exactly is happening here. So let's go ahead and take this to the next level and get back to our vector of strings. Now this is the thing that we last left off on uh, and how it can be kind of difficult to get all of this right. And it turns out it's even more difficult than what we expected. Now I'm going to put in a couple of examples here. I don't want a vector of vectors. I want a vector of strings. I'm going to put in a couple of examples and just give you a moment to look at this. And I'll try to actually leave the moment in after I'm done editing the video. So I'm going to create this hello world. 
So I've put in the hello world and we do see that we are getting a hello and a world allocated here and then I'm printing out what things were deallocated. Now the problem, the reason we did get this hello world uh, printed here in this allocate and deallocate which is calling the new delete resource up here is because we forgot to pass in the actual allocator that we want to use. This is our memory resource here. Okay, so now we are actually pushing these values into this memory resource, this one right here, which is the monatomic buffer resource, which is using this 1024-byte uh, array that I have available to me locally. So if I go ahead and I take this just down to like 8 bytes, which is clearly not going to be big enough, uh, we're going to see the runtime actually generate calls into these new and delete resources here. So here we go, allocating 128 bytes, it couldn't fit. So if you remember from the previous episodes, if you've got a monatomic buffer resource that is not big enough to hold the allocation that you need, then it's going to automatically call new delete. Okay, so we have our baseline code working. Now the part that I'm going to let you stare at for a moment is this one. I have just created this with hello long string. And we can see that the runtime actually allocates 18 bytes and deallocates 18 bytes. And the value of those bytes that it's deallocating is in fact, hello long string. Now we created a PMR vector of PMR strings and we passed in the memory resource. What went wrong? You can pause the video here at this moment if you would like to play with this yourself first. Um, I, I have actually a conference talk that I gave uh, several years ago at C++ Now. I think it was C++ Now 2018, I believe. That's titled, Initializer Lists Are Broken, Let's Fix Them. So th this is the problem that we have at the moment is an initializer list. So if you didn't pause the video, um, that's a clue. The question now becomes how are the objects in an initializer list actually created? And that's what we have to dig into here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move forward and I'm going to show what is happening. So the actual definition in the standard for how an initializer list is created, and that is this bit right here. So the, the actual signature of this initializer list is going to be, the compiler creates for us an initializer list of PMR string. Now this is actually created for us using a const array of that type. Uh, so this is what the compiler has done for us. It has created a const array, and then it's going to create an initializer list that is effectively this. Now, I am putting these double underscores in front of these uh, variable names for data because that's what the compiler is going to do. It's going to create something that is unnameable by us. Now, the next change that I make, the code's no longer going to compile. But the compiler's done something basically like this. So it creates this const array. It is something that cannot be moved from. And then it's going to pass pointers into the vector for that. And now the vector has that compile time. It actually knows the size of this thing. And it can actually do something very efficient because we've seen that it's only doing one allocation. So this hello long string is a standard PMR string, which is going to be created using the global new and delete resource from our default resource here, which is why we get the print information about it. And then that is going to be copied in here. So we get the data. 
this string is actually created here in this array, then it is copied into the vector. Now keep in mind, this cannot be a move. No way for it to be a move because this memory was actually allocated here with the new and delete resource. And then the memory then has to be copied into the PMR string that is using our memory resource of the monatomic buffer resource. Can't be a move, has to be a copy, and we're getting an extra allocation than we actually want. I'm going to get this back into a state where it compiles so we can take another look at this. Notice that this allocation and deallocation happen here. Let's go ahead and move this around. Okay, so we actually get this message saying that it's deallocated this hello long string before we get the message saying the vector has been created. So this temporary created here for us it has a very short life and then the data gets copied in. Confusing and a little frustrating indeed because there's no way to really get any kind of warning or message about this except for hooking into the default memory resource like we just did. Now the next problem is very similar in nature and this is another mistake that I made in the videos previously. And you really don't see these things unless you are doing the um, long strings and you're really like digging into this here. So I just did this push back and I have another string created. Again, I've done an allocation and a deallocation that I didn't expect to be doing. And that's because I have done pushback here. And if you consider the signature for standard vector pushback, what we see is that pushback itself is not a templated function. It can take a const l value reference or an r value reference of the contained type. Notice this is a vector of type t. This is a T. Just because we see T here doesn't mean that this function is a template. So we must first create, again, a standard PMR string before we can copy that data in. Now it looks like a move because this is an R value reference, but because it comes from a different allocator, it actually has to copy the data. So we're not in a very good state here. And in fact, it would seem that our only real option is to do in place back for every single value here. And so if we do in place back and we do in place back here, but we know from watching those previous videos that if I'm doing in place back everywhere, I'm constantly reallocating the size of this thing. So then I end up in this world where I want to do like one allocation for the vector itself, and then I can emplace back all of the various values in here, and that becomes quite the pain. So uh, really what we would like to do is create some sort of a helper function, and I demonstrate this in my uh, initializer list or broken conference talk, but let's go ahead and see what that would look like here. And you use C plus twenty lambdas because they're convenient at the moment.
Uh, but actually calling a C++ 20 Lambda with explicit template parameters doesn't work very well. Uh, let's go ahead and make this a free function. It's interesting, I uh, did not pass the resource here correctly, and I am not getting any compile time errors or warnings, even though this is expecting something. It seems to have just taken the string that I passed it as the initial value here uh, instead of a resource. Okay, so let's go ahead and make sure we pass in our actual memory allocator. Uh, buffer resource that we want. Okay, there we go. So we have created our handy create container function that takes a resource, I don't care what the type is, and a set of forwarding references and then I create the container, I reserve the appropriate capacity because I know what the capacity is going to be in total here, and then I call in place with a forward of each of the arguments using a C++17 fold expression over the comma operator. This is actually guaranteed to be executed left to right in order here, and then I am going to put I'm using a C++20 auto template parameter here. This could just be a regular template parameter, no big deal. And then we're creating our memory resource here, initialize vector, we call the create container function, auto vec. Now this is going to be not guaranteed copy uh, move elision, but it will happen on every compiler regardless of optimization level because there's only one return path through this code. But here we go, we have solved all of the previous problems from the previous episodes. So I will make sure that I share the Compiler Explorer link to this particular code so you can go in and play on your own. One of the main things that you should consider is that you can use this ability to set your own default resource as a way of monitoring where and when you are doing allocations that you didn't think you were doing. And in fact, you could use this technique as a way to guarantee that at runtime, you're never doing any extra allocations if you use these PMR types throughout. So you could actually set some sort of uh, giant global buffer if you wanted to that's fixed at startup time of your application. This could be a much simpler way of doing the same kind of things that game developers and embedded developers have been doing for a long time. You get to pretend like you still have dynamic allocations available to you, but you are actually doing them all on a fixed buffer that was set up at the beginning of the program. So I know, something to think about, a lot of options here. But be aware there's more gotchas that we had not previously seen with our pushback and using initializer list, things that you should be very wary of when you are using PMR custom allocators. Thanks for watching this episode of C++ Weekly. I hope it was educational. 